Welcome to Esalen Live, where we chat with change agents and swim deep waters in an ongoing exploration of human potential. I'm your host, Christine Chen. You know, one of my favorite explorations of the spirit is through mandalas. They can show up in the land, in your movement, and in art. Our guest today is Paul Houstonstam, an artist who specializes in guiding you to self-discovery through this ancient concept, and we're so thrilled that he could join us on Esalen Live today. Hi, Paul. How are you? I'm really fine. How are you? I'm really good. This is one of my favorite topics, I have to say. I even wore a special artist shirt for you in excitement. I love in it. Anticipation of what it is we're going to chat right. about, the mandalas. So how can we explore through mandalas, and where do they show up? I mean, I've seen people talk about them in land and I practice with movement as a mandala, but what would you say is sort of the, the core concept in mandalas and art? Well, the core concept, first of all, uh, mandalas are ancient. They go back at least 6,000 years, several cultures around the world. And I kind of fell into them in the um, early seventies and early eighties. But basically what a mandala is, is it's a circle with a center in it or some kind of structure built around the center. And in Tibetan mythology, what a mandala is, is a sacred path to your own heart center. So what does that mean? It means that the center of the mandala is your heart center. So in practicing the mandalas, what you are doing is practicing first getting out of your mind and second, second getting down into your heart center. Even if it's a very simple mandala or drawing, that's the basic concept is to work for your own center. And as we're working toward or for our own centers, um, what, what, are we, what are we expressing? Is it an expression or is it just something that you're exploring? I think both are true. You're expressing and exploring. The way the Buddhists who are very adept in mandala drawing they see it as you're opening up another set of eyes as you move away from your head, which our culture is pretty much head based and you're moving down to your heart, your heart actually has eyes. And so even in a simple practice of coloring mandalas, looking at mandalas, there's always a potential there to expand your consciousness. Mm -hmm. The way I say it is that something happens in painting. And of course, Esalen is such a great place to do it is you actually have a chance to have a far greater capacity than you've ever known once you're doing mandala painting, which what that means is somebody that's never painted before, has no experience, can all of a sudden have a, an awakening through the colors and the paint. Hmm. And they can express things that are very deep in them very quickly in just a few days. Well, let me ask you, if you don't mind, about colors. So. You know, when I work in, for me, example, I work in chakras, and so maybe a chakra is a certain color, but that's not my favorite color, but that energy is relevant at that time in my practice. Do people choose colors when they work with mandalas with you, or do you just encourage them to say, like, what color are you drawn to, or is that all part of the exploration? And the last thing I want to say before you answer that is, if you have a color you want to ask a question about, Paul's right here, floated into the chat. Send him a little love or a thumbs up if any of this is helping you connect with spirit, mandalas, and the practice. So colors, Paul, do we choose? Do we let them come to us? Well, we start off, it's a good example that you gave with the chakra system because it's like a rainbow of colors that we have. And when you first come into one of my workshops, it's you feel like, you think like you're choosing a color. But in mandala practice, what happens is you, you make a color choice and then you go around the wheel, around the reel, around the wheel. And eventually you find out that you are not choosing the colors. The colors are choosing you. That's the whole beauty of the mandala is something kind of takes over when you're painting. And it happens to everybody where it becomes a spiritual practice. Uh, even if you have no skill or you don't think you have skill, that doesn't negate anything. You still have this experience. And in my world, colors are divine. Colors are like deities. No, you know, nobody really knows what black and white are. Is black all colors or no colors? Is white all colors or no colors? Is our heart green? Is our heart aura blue? 
these are the questions that come up. And the beautiful thing about a workshop like this is that the group itself becomes the teacher. Say if you have 20 people in the group, all 20 people are going through all 20 paintings. So everybody that's participating, we're all together as one. And when we're connected as one, that's really one of the basic principles of the mandalas. It's like if you could imagine a group of people and their hearts are all connected, that's what the mandala is. And the I colors are it. vital. Love it so much. I want to hang on this photo, this beautiful photo that you sent. This is at us, Lynn, and they're so different. So if you at home are watching, look at each of these pieces of art that have been created by these humans. They're so different. And mm -hmm. Paul, I'm just going to invite you to share one or two stories, nothing that is too personal for the privacy of the people in this photo. But what do each of these say in a story? Can you pick a couple of out, point them, point them to us and say, like, what did this mean? Right. If that's okay. Okay, so first of all, the instructions in the workshop are the same, but they come out so different. Some people, if you say put blue there, they'll refuse to do it. So you have to approach them like say, hey, don't put blue there. <laughs> and everybody comes up with what they are at that particular time. One of the biggest comments I hear is, I never choose these colors. And my response is, well, how do you know you chose those colors? How do you know that there's not another part of you, you that loves that color and that's why you're using it? So for instance, if you look at this beautiful uh, picture and you look there in the front on the grass, there's a great big mandala that's put down on the grass. The and green one that, that has the, yeah, the green brown one. around it. Okay. Right. That what that one is is a whole circle of feathers with a sacred center. So somebody's exploring and you can't get anything lighter. What's lighter than a feather? Mm. Uh and it a feather takes you to a lot of shaman practice or Native Americans. And so when you're putting colors on on feathers, you're exploring what I would call the lightness of being. And of course, green is the color of the heart chakra. If you look at the chakras from red at the root chakra to gold or white at the top, the heart is considered um, the very center. And in mandala speaking, all mandalas, doesn't matter when they were made, past, present, or future, the center is always the same. It's the heart center. So when you look at all these pictures, and, and and on the ground, if you look to the right of that, our right, there's another smaller version that somebody's holding. There's a green circle with feathers around it. Right. And let so me the, ask you, right next yeah, to sure. it is like a, a light blue one that is not a circle. And next to it is a Buddha, what looks like an image of the Buddha. Buddha. I'm not going to, I don't want to assume. But uh, that also, <clears throat> excuse me, wrong pipe, isn't a circle as well. Can you tell us about why those are mandalas? Well, Let's go. You mentioned a circle. So let's look. If you take a square and you put a circle into it and it has this connection, they call it a dynamism. There's a movement between the circle and the square, which is one of the basic things of mandalas. And the circle represents the female and the square represents the masculine. All women know that men are square and all men <laughs> know that women are circular. So when you get into this kind of practice, it's a sacral practice. It's very ancient. And so we do two other things besides the mandalas. We do trees. I call them mandala trees because when you're connected through the tree, it's still a way of connecting with everybody. So we do trees and tree also, they connect to the earth. You know, you put your roots down. So trees are an option. And the other option is deities. And so I usually bring maybe a one or two Hindu deities like say Saraswati, or I bring um, Buddhist deities like Buddha. And people have the option. Usually I recommend that you do that, not on your first painting, but on your second painting. But they're sacred images. Uh, some people really flourish doing a tree. It's a little harder maybe than a mandala, but some people take it on. And then also the Buddha. And we all know what Buddha represents. It's not so much the picture of the Buddha. It's that Buddha means awareness. So if somebody's doing a Buddha, it means they're practicing the art of expanding their awareness. Mm. But the usual is mandalas. The usual yeah. is mandalas. 
I think I would go for Saraswati. She is my favorite deity. Oh, so I love much, Saraswati. So I love Saraswati. She's the uh, goddess of artists. I have a five foot carved one from South, South India. When really? you walk in my front door, you look right at a beautiful Saraswati. Wow. And this painting that you've got up, can we okay, go back to that one? Back. Yeah, of course. Yeah, absolutely. Now, I was going to ask you about the, this. This is a, look at the colors, how beautiful this is. That mm. purple uh, and that beautiful aqua. And what this is, is above Esalen, a few hundred miles, there's a sacred Buddhist temple. And they have this mandala on the earth, and it's made of 100,000 rose bushes. Can you imagine that? Mm. So this is a little map of that template. We call it a lotus mandala. Oh. So in the west, it's the rose, and in the east, it's the lotus. So when you do a mandala, what you're practicing is opening your heart and so the heart opens like a lotus opens in the east so this person without knowing it has chosen to begin the actual practice of opening her heart mm -hmm. because the beautiful thing about this is you're looking at a painting on the outside but there's a simultaneous coordination for the inside it means that the outside and the ensign are lining up. And I always tell people, you know, in the spiritual practice, you only know outside equal to you know inside. And you know, our culture, we're not very good at exploring the inside. We're much better at the outside. Mm -hmm. So what a mandala does is it teaches people to practice looking at the inside. And that's what yeah. this person is doing. And that's what some of us would define as harmony, inner, outer harmony together, right? The union, the sort of, where we want to be in higher place within ourselves and outside of ourselves. If you're at home and you're watching this beautiful artwork pass your screen, the detail work that's going into these beautiful mandalas that were shared with us by artist Paul Houston Stam in advance of his upcoming workshop at Esalen, much like this one, where all these people are just journeying to their hearts, um, please give them a thumbs up if you're enjoying this, if it's speaking to you, if you're interested, we'd love to hear from you because guess what? Paul is coming back to Esalen. Hey. It's a beautiful thing. Art is a spiritual yes, path. Is. Discovering your creative mandala and journeying back to your own heart, journeying back to your center, the harmony, everything that Paul shared. Uh, May 23rd through 27th. So this is one of our longer workshops. Paul, so can you give us an idea each day what's what might be happening? I mean, in short. The, the nice thing about a longer workshop is I always recommend that you're at Esalen, you got to go have a massage. You absolutely <laughs> have to have a massage. You need to walk around, breathe in the air. And I always talk about when you're doing mandalas, you need to slow down. So we have the extra days and really we're exploring our own inner paradise. And I always suggest that if you can't find paradise at Esalen, you're, you're, you're gonna have a hard time finding it anywhere because the great uh, Thoreau said that if you, where you stand, if you look around, you're in paradise, but you have to be able to have paradise inside to be able to see it on the outside. Oh, so beautiful. Everybody say bye, Paul. Wave goodbye. <laughs> Everyone, namaste. Namaste. Welcome yeah. to Esalen for Paul's workshop. There's one spot left and a little bit of a waiting list, so you never know. Send a little love in the chat. Have a beautiful day, everyone. Journey to your heart, however, speaks to you today. Maybe it's a mandala. See you later.